All right, Mosin. All right, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, we heard a lot from various organizations and also faculty standpoints. So I want to give you uh, uh, my standpoint. Uh, I'm a PhD student. I joined Case Western in 2011. And I work, I'm working with Professor John Landowski on fracture and fatigue of materials. We do lots of mechanical testing, reliability testing, and uh, uh, what I want to focus on is some of the standardization needs for this technology that you heard about, additive manufacturing. And uh, so there are lots of activities going on around this technology, as you heard. And uh, but there are lots of needs for having new standards around this technology. You see here in this slide uh, some of the prototype parts uh, that was made through this technology. For example, you see some brackets, some blades, all of them was made through additive manufacturing. You see also some standard samples, bent bars, and other geometries to do some mechanical testing and qualification. Uh, because when we have a new technology, we need to have Lots of uh, standard, lots of qualification and certification to be able to qualify that particular item to be uh, in the service. So let's look at uh, some uh, trends and see where is this additive manufacturing uh, actually is being used. So we see lots of applications in automotive. We see lots of application in aerospace, defense, production, entertainment, consumer products, and we see it all over the place. And as you see in this video, uh, ASTM standard basically defined this in F2792, which is a standard for terminology for this technology, defined it at, uh, as a making 3D objects layer by layer from a CAD model. So the role of ASTM here is critical because everybody can define this technology differently. So we need to have a terminology, and that's why you see here this uh, standard. So uh, we see basically this technology all over the place. We see it on different companies, aerospace, medical, uh, you name it. Uh, we see signs of tsunami around this technology, but there are lots of needs for qualification and certification. And we don't have too much of those, uh, but they are keeping up and keeping up. So you see different companies started way back to work on this technology, and some of them are starting or evaluating to be used. Even in food industry, you can see this technology has an impact. Uh, as an example here, uh, I'm going to give you one example. ASTM, for example, has a major role in standardization and certification. This is just an example. Other organizations like UL or ISO or whatever you can name it uh, have an impact also in this certification process. But uh, there are lots of activities being done at ASTM, especially ASTM F42, Committee on Additive Manufacturing around this technology. And that's what I'm involved with. And I'll give you one example. Uh, so in this slide, for example, we see uh, an example from UL. There are lots of activities around this technology at Underwriter Laboratory. You see lots of trainings. You see lots of testing and certifications. And you can go to their website and see what kind of resources they have available for you as a student. So let's look at the uh, backgrounds and see how these standards are being developed. In some countries, these standards are being regulated by organizations and governments. And in the US, most likely, most uh, I mean, there are mostly consensus spaces, and lots of organizations can take part in, can, you can have an impact on how this standard is being developed. And basically, they are being started at the task group level. So you bring up an uh, issue. One of the questions one of the students ask is, once the new technology comes available, so how are the standards, be standards being developed? And that's when you attend one of these uh, meetings at various levels, you can suggest some of your suggestion or some of the needs that you, you think it's need to be done. And then you will bring it at the meetings. A task group can be formed and look at the uh, various ways 
in order to put these into the standards. And there are various stages you need to go through until the standards become available. For example, we can see at the society and main committee level and the subcommittee level, at the task group level, there are lots of balloting and uh, lots of drafting, that kind of things, and final approval by ASDM so you can have the standards ready available to use. As an example here, I'll, I'll give you one example from my standpoint. We have been researching on orientation dependence properties of titanium alumina, titanium alloys made by additive manufacturing, and in uh, one of the works that we have been done, we looked at f orientation dependence on fracture and fatigue properties. So we have conducted tests in various orientations, and we see lots of differences. If we want to use conventional standards, we are not able to fully understand the properties because there are lots of differences between this technology and conventional manufacturing processes. So based on this work, which was published in Journal of Material, Materials, uh, materials, actually, there was a work item that was registered. This work was uh, presented at ASTM F42 last January, and due to significant amount of interest from various organizations, uh, there was a uh, persuasive decision to move forward, and uh, the task group started to uh, register this work item, as you can see here. And I was uh, assigned to be a technical contact for this standard in order to move this effort forward. And more recently, there was a presentation at Berlin at, in DIN, uh, which is a standard organization for Germany, around this work. And uh, the first draft is going to be available quickly so people can look at it and then uh, move forward. So as a student, how you can get involved? You can, first of all, as an example here, I have ASTM, but you can obviously join whatever organization that you, th you can think of, and you heard from five of, or six of them here. You can get the uh, free membership from almost all of these organizations, and you can attend uh, committee meetings, uh, almost always free. And you can access to project grants, a scholarship, and uh, lots of other things. You get to know lots of key people in the field that you're interested in. So there are lots of networking opportunities. You get visibility, you will make your resume, and you learn about the standard development and lots of other things. And also you can uh, get access to lots of training and webinars through uh, this, for example, uh, ASTM website, and uh, there is one webinar that I gave, and you can access to it. And I'll finish here uh, with one last comment. If you want to get out of the college with having uh, uh, something in your back of pocket or make a difference, join one of these organizations. You'll get a chance to give input. You'll get a chance to make a difference. So with that, I'll stop here. And I'll thank you for taking time to attend this workshop. I don't have time to show this video. You can download this video uh, from the presentations and uh, learn more about this. Thank you.